Hey guys, what is up? Red Panda Mining here, back with another video. Guys, today I want to take a look at the Ethereum Constantinople hard fork that will be happening in around seven days and four hours as of making this video. Probably by the time you guys see this video, the next day it'll be around six days. So this is a website, coingecko.com, that has the Ethereum Constantinople countdown. And as you guys can see, we are currently at the block at 7,238,634. And the hard fork will happen at block 7,280,000. So as the making of this video, 41,366 blocks to go. And when is it going to happen? It's going to happen around February 28th, February 27th, 28th. So what are the highlights, guys? Lower gas fees, optimal smart contract execution, reduced mining rewards, and difficulty bomb delay. And as you guys know, I made a video about a week ago talking about the Ethereum, being, Ethereum difficulty bomb being activated and showing you guys the charts and whatnot that we're getting we're getting less ethereum rewards because the difficulty bomb has been activated so once once the constantinople hard fork will be on it will implement a uh, difficulty bomb delay for about 12 months until they can come out with the next hard fork which i believe will be the proof of stake or possibly a hybrid proof of stake which will be which is the iep one two three four uh, so, no, sorry, that's not the IEP 1234, uh, proof of stake, I don't know which one that is, but that <laughs> that will happen after the uh, 12 months time, hopefully, so we'll see. It'll probably be delayed. <laughs> so, what are the upgrades, guys, for Constantinople Hard Fork? I'll go through them again. Uh, IEP 145, IEP 1014, IEP 1052 and IEP 1283 and then the most notable one for us miners is the IEP 1234 reduce block mining rewards from 3 ethereum to 2 ethereum and delay the difficulty bomb for 12 months so guys basically this video I'm gonna show you guys I wanna talk about prog pow and that beginning there was just showing you guys about the Constantinople hard fork that's gonna happen in 7 days or so so here's the GitHub for the Constantinople hard fork. Um, if you guys want to read about what exactly they're implementing, I'll have this link down below. You guys can read it and have a good read. Okay, so here is the next topic here, the IEP 1057. This is this is for the ProgPow implementation uh, IEP. And as you guys know, so as you guys can see, 1057 is not going to be implemented in the Constantinople hard fork. So only these five upgrades are going to be happening, coming up. So we are not going to have ProgPow in the next week or so, uh, if some of you uh, thought that was going to happen. But it won't be. So um, guys, with this, with this uh, GitHub here, this is... I want to talk about why I think ProgPow is a solution that we should be going towards. As you guys know, A6 dominated the market, right? We got the Bitmain A3, and we possibly have a another uh, ASIC manufacturer called Lindsay. Lindsay, I don't know, some a Chinese name that's apparently made a an ASIC for Ethereum that's like. I don't know, 40 times better, 40 times faster. <laughs> I, I don't know the exact specifics, but apparently they, they might be mining with it right now as we speak. But with this uh, with this part article here, it's not an article, it's just the explanation for ProgPow. What I want to just explain, guys, what, what, what ProgPow is, what the algorithm is about. So here's the specification of ProgPow. ProgPow is based on ETHash and follows the same general structure. The algorithm has five main changes from ETHash, each tuned for commodity GPUs while minimizing the possible advantage of a specialized ASIC, aka those Bitmain E3s, Lindsay ASICs, and whatever we don't know. 
The name of the algorithm comes from the fact that inner loop between global memory access is a randomly generated program based on the block number. The random program is designed to both run efficiently on commodity GPUs and also cover most of the GPU's functionality. The random program sequence prevents the creation of a fixed pipeline implementation as seen in specialized ASICs. The access size has also, also been tweaked to match temporary GPUs. In contrast to ETH, ETH hash, the changes below detail below make ProgPow dependent on core compute compatibilities in addition to memory bandwidth and size. So you guys know when when you were mining Ethereum before, say you're you're you open up your afterburner MSI afterburner, you pump down the core clock down to minus 400 minus 200 let's say, on your uh, Nvidia cards just for example, and then you pump up the memory clock up to 600 or 800 whatever depending on the memory that you guys had right. Now. ProgPow is is dependent on core and memory bandwidth memory so <clears throat> it's 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 going to be fair i believe it will be fair now between amd cards and nvidia cards so just i'm just scrolling past all this stuff this is just this is just the the developments the uh, coding language i'm not going to go through that <laughs> I, I don't understand most of this stuff. You guys can read it if you want. I'll have this link down below. <clears throat> but um, down near the bottom of it, ProgPal, the rationale. So ProgPal utilizes almost all parts of commodity GPUs, uh, in excluding... So the GPUs for Prog, the, ProgPal will not utilize the graphics pipeline, so which is the displays, geometry engines, and texturing, and also floating point math. <clears throat> So displays, I'm assuming, is just the, the display outputs on your video card, like geometry engines, like the 3D modeling or like RTX cores, whatever, all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> Making use of either of these would have would have significant portability issues between commodity hardware vendors and across programming languages. Since the GPU is almost fully utilized, there's, there's a little opportunity for specialized ASICs to gain efficiency. Removing both the graphics pipeline and floating point, floating point math could provide up to 1.2 times gains in efficiency compared to the 2 times gains possible in ETHash and 50x gains possible for Kryptonite. Backwards compatibility. This algorithm is not backwards compatible with the existing ETHash and will require a fork for adoption. Furthermore, the network hash rate will, will half since twice as much memory is loaded per hash. <clears throat> so yeah, that's it guys. So we'll be using more core and memory. Um, well, using both core and memory. So that's good. That's good. Okay, next up guys I want to talk about is the ProgPal carbon vote. So I showed you guys, I think it was last week, about the uh, etherchain.org. They had a voting based on which pool you're mining. And as you guys can see, most of the pools, pretty much all the pool, all the main pools have voted yes to mining uh, for uh, for uh, going for saying yes to ProgPow. And as you can see, there's still a few pools, a few people that have not voted yet. But most of the big pools, Nano Pool, Ethermine, F2 Pool, have voted yes. And there's been a lot of votes on Ethermine. Okay, so the carbon vote. So on www.progpowcarbonvote.com, this is a, another way you guys can vote for the ProgPow implementation. So I'll scroll down here. <clears throat> as, you guys, as you guys can see, around, how many Ethereum is this? Around 1,753,708 Ethereum has been voted for yes, uh, that they want ProgPow, and no has accumulated about 1, uh, 191,803 Ethereum for no. So right now, as you guys can see, this pie graph chart here, no is around 9.8% and yes is around 90%. So that's cool. That's good. I feel like that's good. Um, so if you guys want to vote, here's how you do it. Um, right here, simply send a zero ETH transaction from your wallet to the yes or no address which is right here these two addresses here yes for this one and no for this one 
The transaction itself serves as a message of the vote. The ether under the ether under under the form address from the address of the transaction will be considered a batch of ballots that support or oppose the proposal. For the transactions to succeed, a minimum of 30,000 30, gas is required. Note that if you send a transaction with Ether, it will fail. If your wallet software does not allow a zero Ether transaction, try my crypto or my Ether wallet. So I'm not sure if you can do you can send it out from a ledger. I have not tried that, but uh, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna attempt that and do a vote here, guys. But as you guys can see, the vote 90 percent yes for uh, ProgPal. So that's pretty cool. Um, so I showed you guys the Ether chain already. Okay, <clears throat> what there's a website here called whatisprogpow.com. Uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna read it um, to you guys, but I, I'll have it linked down below. If you guys still would like to know what ProgPow is, and also understand what it is and what why why does it matter, you know why why does continued ASIC resistance matter? And you know Ethereum plans. You know Ethereum has planned for ASIC resistance in their in their yellow paper, white paper, I guess. And how do you support ProgPow? You guys can do the carbon vote or choose to be or mine to a pool that is signaling uh, ProgPow for yes. And yeah. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope this information helps you. It sure helped me understand a little bit more, but. I, I made this video just to raise awareness of what Ethereum is doing. I, I can't say that I'm 100% into mining Ethereum right now. I'm, I'm mining a whole bunch of other coins right now. A little bit of, of more speculative mining, but I, I love Ethereum. I, I, I like, I like eth what Ethereum's doing, and I think Ethereum will be a pretty big proponent in the cryptocurrency uh, world in the future. So... Um, as they are now with a lot of developers and such. So, yeah, please let me know what you guys think and like and subscribe, all that good stuff. I hope you guys will like it, but if not, please also leave a comment and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. I appreciate all of you. Have a good one.